Here's the 4090 Ti. Android can't get iMessage, but nothing does. And AMD, I thought they had nothing left. They got more to give us. You just thought of that in the moment. AMD's giving us so much more. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, November 15th, 2023, also known as opposite day. PlayStation Portal Day, baby. Oh. Well, as soon as you left, I got my shipment notification. <laughs> What? My shipment notifications. Right. <laughs> so there was a comment that indicated that I get my own intro, but you don't have an intro. Reese declined. Reese said he didn't want to do anything after me. So do you want to? I don't care. Every time you do say it, I do feel like I should be saying something. And I'm I your don't. Brett host, and I'm your Kyler Reese. And I'm Kyle. You do it at different parts of the intro, and it just interrupts me. I thought about doing it today. Oh, great. I thought about well, interrupting you, well, but I thought I'll save that for a while, and I'll scare him later on. <laughs> well, NVIDIA was saving their 4090 Ti, and now we have another set of pictures of this big wonkin' honkin' chomper. I don't this even know how to tie one of these. 4090 Ti, look at that thing right there. Also potentially known as the Titan Ada is a potential name for it right there next to the last Titan card that Nvidia ever released, the Titan RTX. Just to show you the difference in just pure gargantuanism that Nvidia has decided to establish us with. And this thing was posted on Reddit by Gamer2Live of the 4090 Ti. It says it on the prototype engineering sample. Allegedly, the card came from an Nvidia employee and the Redditor said he's going on a trip and so he can't answer any more questions about it for right now but when he gets back, everything will be fine. Too bad the post got deleted and the user got deleted as well. But this does show off that the 4090 Ti at least was in development. Looks like it has the PCB. Whether or not that we're supposed to get the Super Series potentially launching in January, maybe they will launch a 4090 Ti. It's hard to say. You know what I can say with a decent amount of confidence? Give it to me. That employee lost his employment. Potentially, if it could be tied to them for sure. It, yeah. It, oh yeah. It, it, tied. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. Not and a no, sponsor. you didn't. The Thai company? No, the laundry detergent. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> well, that ruins all of my segue. <laughs> MSI didn't want Intel to see that they accidentally leaked their upcoming laptop for Meteor Lake. So Meteor Lake's a big deal because it's Intel's next transition off of their current node onto their next one. It's gonna have a whole bunch of impact into having tile-based architecture. It's supposed to be a really big deal. And so people are hotly awaiting this and it's supposed to be launching in December of this year, except for MSI released their AI series of laptops, which showed off how much they're gonna cost. Look at it starting at 1049 for their Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. At least you get 16 gigabytes of memory. And you do get art graphics. That's not terrible, depending on the performance. These things are supposed to go up to 5.1 gigahertz at the highest end. That Ultra 7 is supposed to do 4.8 gigahertz, but it's gonna have six P cores, eight E cores, and then two SOC cores. So it's getting even more complicated. Just making up words. 16 <laughs> cores and 22 threads is what that bad boy has. You wanna talk about making up words. So while this new naming scheme for Meteor Lake is a little wild, right? You got Core Ultra 7. I discovered, and I haven't seen anybody else talk about this. Mm -hmm. I've discovered that Intel pulled the sneaky with how they named their processors right now, and it's even more baffling, all right? You think going to Core Ultra is weird? This one is gonna boggle your mind. Uh. The Core i9-12900K <laughs> processor, right? Intel Core i9-12900K processor, it's a thing. Core i9-12900K. Uh, uh. Okay, Core i9-13900K processor, right? These are the official names by Intel. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. what do you think the 14th gen version of this is called? i9-14999K. Nine, four, Okay. It's even more confusing than you're making it right now. They call it the Intel Core i9 processor 14900K. I've confirmed that that is not a typo. That is how they want this product addressed. The it's, Core i9 processor 14900K. I think this is worse than TI Super. Yes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> this is one of the most ridiculous naming things I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. To swap where the word processor goes to interrupt something that I've been saying for De over a decade at this point, I do I blank processor number processor <laughs> to throw, to shove, to thrust the processor in the middle of the i9 and the 14900K is egregious. It's a metaphor, much like how you thrust the processor within the motherboard socket. Does it have any meaning? What's the four of the meta? 1900. 
900. Four, I got it, yep. got it, four. But let's talk about one, because One X GPU is releasing a new eGPU that has a lot of tricks up its sleeve, and specifically has one trick up its sleeve. Actually, it has multiple, I'm lying about everything. It can connect over USB 4, but also mm -hmm. Oculink, which is great. Oculink supports up to 63 gigabits per second, which is a little bit faster than the 40 gigabits per second of USB 4. But you're gonna need that extra 23 gigabits of bandwidth. Guess why? Why? Because it's got an SSD in it. Oh no. It's the world's first portable eGPU with storage, but it's gonna be limited to PCI Express 2.0 speed, so it will only go two gigabytes per second. I'm sorry. So you don't need it. No, you do need it. You do. You do need that extra 23 gigabits so that you can reserve that for the SSD. You can still get Just full more. GPU speed. You still get the 40 gigabits on the GPU, allegedly. Because huh. if you used it, on a Thunderbolt dock, right? That that two gigabytes per second or 16 gigabits is gonna come out of your 40. So you only got 24 left. Okay. But if you're if you're doing it on 63, well now you're down to 47. You're totally fine. You still got plenty of GPU wiggle room. So you said this is a limited No, they thing? haven't they haven't even launched it yet. So it's gonna be on Indiegogo and the campaign's not even out yet. But this is supposed to be used for little portable devices like the Legion Go, et cetera. Like the RK77. Not what we're talking about. It already is the GPU. <laughs> Stop. It already has the GPU baked in, the Oculink connector is supposed to be a new standard that allows eGPUs to connect better. Kind of like how the Ally has that stupid proprietary one. This one's not proprietary. That's okay. the idea. And so it could be expanded into more handhelds potentially in the future. I just want more SSDs on GPUs, so I think this is cool. It's not technically on the GPU, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, like just a little combo. Like that. Like we are with Reese. Yo, welcome back to YFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today we're looking at some real budget deals, starting with the Thermalright Phantom Spirit 120 SE ARGB CPU air cooler, going for 10% off at only $35.99. But then next we have the Rosewall FBM X2 400 Helix Micro ATX case that comes bundled with a 400 watt power supply for only $49.96, making it $60.03 off. And then lastly, another great budget pickup is this Intel Arc A750 Limited Edition 8 gig graphics going for only $209.99, making it $40 off. Now that the limited edition really is limited edition, it might be a good time to pick one up. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Oh, uh, Reese, I got a deal for you. You want the world's first e-ink curved monitor? Cause that's coming out. You can't I stop it. I wanna read in style. The sun coming out with a 4,000 R curve, which means in order to make a circle, you need four meters of this bed, like the circle would be four meters big. So it's a very subtle curve. If I glanced at these images, I would not think it was curved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know that LG monitor I have down there? That's, that's 800R. So that, you need 0.8 meters to make a circle. That this thing, one you is could four. put two of those things together and it'd be a circle. Please, uh, the price please. point of this is going to be really rough coming in at 1798. That is expensive. But Who's you're using this. I don't know. People like us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we did this video where we gamed on the world's first e ink monitor? That was fun. That Why was... did it play so roughly? No, because the monitor sucked. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be used for gaming. But somebody brought up that it could be potentially used like in a server environment because it's very low wattage. You're not mm. refreshing things too quickly. It's not bad technology to be used in certain sectors, but definitely not for gamers. What's the refresh rate on it? Irrelevant. Not advertised. Not, not, not listed. <laughs> <laughs> well, what also wasn't listed as a feature set of the Nothing phone was being able to use iMessage, but that has rapidly changed because Nothing has announced that their phone too will not now be able to send iMessages to iPhones. It's the first Android OEM to make this happen. It's part of their Nothing's Chat app that's gonna be updating this coming Friday, November 17th, to allow this to happen. And the reason this does happen is not because Apple has all of a sudden gotten gracious, being like, hey, you know what, Android, come on into our ecosystem, or they're supporting RCS or anything like that. No, you have to log in to Sunbird, which is a third-party service that you log in with your Apple ID to to Sunbird. Hasn't this already been a thing? It has been in like separate apps that you can download on your Android phones mm -hmm. and they all work the same way, which is logging yeah. in to a third party service that you have to trust with your Apple ID, which is very sketch. So as MKBHD put in his video saying, it's literally signing in on some Mac mini in a server farm somewhere. And that Mac mini will then do all the routing for you to make this happen. Is privacy concerning to say the very least? Nothing does talk about this saying that it's stored in an encrypted 
database as a token and that what did i say he said encrypted encrypted oh it's like it's sasquatch <laughs> i got it uh and then after two weeks of inactivity sunbird will delete your account information however it's not out of the question that companies lie about this stuff all the time and it's just because it's not being handled natively you have to log in with your account details it's a little sketch but if you want it it's now there i'm pretty cavalier with how advertisers acquire my information i'm not i'm not really bothered by it but this feels like there can be some shady stuff afoot <laughs> this is above putting your email address in somewhere yeah you are literally logging in yeah. on a computer that you don't own or don't access in yeah. order to give them permission to do stuff with your account and even if you trust this service the companies are always using your information in some way, selling it to somebody, using it as data. No, <laughs> <That's> no, <it. laughs> you're lying. Company, companies love me. But now they have my Apple credit card number. <laughs> Maybe not that far, but they, it wouldn't be too hard for them to if figure they, out a way to, you know, get it. Yeah. Well, just like nothing is pairing up iMessage with their stuff, Instagram is unpairing threads. What about if you delete your threads account, now your Instagram account doesn't get deleted with it too. Is this like Being the opposite separated. of Apple pairs? That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was one of the main complaints that people had with threads they created an account and then they couldn't delete it when they found out they didn't like the app service do people still use threads yes actually a growing number of people use threads especially as they're getting more and more tired of the alternative is it a growing number or yes. is it the same number of people who originally went? the number is not physically getting larger Kyler. Yeah, yeah. The, the number's ticking up in numeric value that's what we're talking about and amd knows how to physics really well because they're slapping out some more x3d processors that look like the hunger games it kind of does and it's on the am4 platform so this is according to a well-known leaker known as chili the dog well you're gonna like his twitter handle even more it's golden mango i like chili the dog more <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be pronounced chilled dog but i don't you know i don't, I don't no, play that game. no it's chili <laughs> so the two new x3d chips that are supposed to be coming out for the am4 platform are going to be on the 5700 x3d and the 5500 x3d both an eight core variant and a six core variant with 96 megabytes of l3 cache which essentially makes it roughly slightly slower version of the 5800 x3d and a slightly slower version of the 5600 x3d and the 5600 x3d as you might remember happened to be a micro center exclusive here in the united states what i'm personally hoping for with these new chips is that the price point comes down and they're available more widely so maybe amd found out hey we have all of this extra 3d v cache that we can slap onto these chips we have some extra chips of things nobody bought maybe we can sell these bad boys they do have 96 megabytes of that level three cache, which is the same amount as the other chips that have launched recently. You might be able to get really good performance at a decent price, and especially considering the 5800 X3D is currently selling for 322. I always was against the price point of the 5600 X3D at 299. That needed to be closer to 250, but considering they have to compete with the 7800 X3D, which is coming in at 389, I've seen it down to 350 before. Actually, no, Micro Center had it for 299 recently. They've dropped dropped in price significantly. I think the 5700X3D has to launch at 300 and the 5500X3D needs to launch at 200. And if it does- I think 200 would be a good place to be at. That would be fantastic. $200 to get a 5500X3D. Ooh, goodness. That's that's one of the best value gaming chips ever made. Yeah. Not, not even of this generation, but like AMD really given the good good to their last generation platform. <laughs> Thank you for that riveting commentary, Kyle. You guys had some riveting commentary in the comments, so let's uh, respond to some of them. RL Hemingway says, I still miss Reese, but I'm having so much fun watching Brett trying to keep on track while Kyler is just pure chaos. It is so much fun. I'm just embracing it. <laughs> uh, Jeff says, hi. Also says, Kyler is spot on about NVIDIA's graph being something a kid drew. It looks like the kid's marker ran out of ink while drawing that last column. Mm -hmm. It was pretty funny. Cosmic Custardust saying, not giving APO support to 12th and 13th gen, only 14th gen completely removes the point of LG 1700 while over 60% of all the big little CPUs can't even use it. And Intel still wonders why so many people keep moving to Ryzen. All of saying Intel APO not coming to 13th and 12th gen quite seems like planned obsolescence, which part of the problem, but also it's not coming to the 14600K. Yeah. I didn't see enough comments about that. They're not putting it on the i5. That's a big problem. That's a bigger problem to me. Why is it not on the i5? Have they, I, I forget exactly how this 
Blim, but have they specifically said it's not? They said they have no, uh, on the, no plans. I, so for the 12th and 13th gen, they say they have no plans. Yeah. For the i5, it is just not on the supported list of processors. I don't think it's out of the question, but. <laughs> so that's that's like part of it. So Penfold talks about there are some, you know, legit reasons. It could be some on-chip circuitry or like some real reason, real definable quantitative reason why they're doing this. The problem is they haven't said what it is, if there is one. So by that, you can take that silence to mean they don't have a good one and it's money. They said, grow up and stop being poor. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, or it could be that their marketing can't keep pace with what's actually going on. They don't realize that they need to address this. And I don't know, I, I think this is problematic that AP only works on roughly two processors, the 14700K and the 14900K. That's frankly garbage, unless you can give me some sort of like, listen, we, we put this weird, like one little transistor right here. And that's what enables this. It would still be like, okay, it's a hardware reason. I don't like it, but at least like one of the reasons why like DLSS, I don't crap on that so much, even though like it's not supported on AMD cards. It's like, there's a hardware reason it's tensor cores, right? Like you need the tensor cores in order to run it. And then also with like DLSS 3.0, you need the optical flow accelerators. It's like, I can't argue as much because I can't prove them wrong, but it still, it still doesn't, leave a good taste in the mouth. Kind of like the Arc GPU in my mouth. Did it leave a bad taste in your mouth? I you... left sick. Oh, that's a good point. Broke Dad saying, just wondering how long it is before you or Reese break out the holiday decor. The store started the day after Halloween, of course. I didn't really have plans to. At one point, I set the lights to green and red. Yeah, that was like weird. a few I years like ago. That. I. It's too hard. It, it requires me like changing the channels that the lights are on. And you have stuff. a Subway uh, paper bag over there sitting on the floor. Holiday. This has been here for months. Oh no. I ate all of it. That's not a problem. September 21st. I must have been really hungry before hot news. Anyways, uh, we got Ryan saying, anytime I hear Prometheus, my mind instantly goes to Kablam, Prometheus and Bob. Do you understand that reference? Uh, it's like the movie where they went to White Castle. Good Burger? There's a sequel coming out. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I saw the commercial for it this past weekend. We're not past the weekend just yet. There's one up coming. It, the weekend comes. Today's hump day. The weekend comes in the future, not the past. Is that why it's called hump day? Yeah. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>